Hi everyone. In this video, we will continue measuring inductance using a multimeter and a signal generator. So this is a follow-up video to my previous video. If you haven't watched that one, please go ahead and watch that one first. The link should appear somewhere on the screen and down in the description below, because I'm going to skip all the details that I have covered on the first video. And uh, in this video, we will try to improve the precision of this method and try to measure smaller inductor values. So let me talk a little bit about the software tool that we have used first and how it works. So when we input the exact resistance of our resistor and the voltage drop across the resistor, uh, first the tool calculates the current across the resistor using Ohm's law. Since the resistor and the inductor is connected in series, the current flowing through the resistor and the current flowing through the inductor will be the same. Once we input the voltage drop across our inductor, and as the tool already knows the current across it, from there on it calculates the reactance across our inductor. And using that reactance and the frequency, it calculates the inductance. So these are the values for a measurement that I did for the 4.7 micro Henry inductor. And uh, if you have noticed, the voltage drop across our inductor is quite small. Increasing this value will give us better precision overall. To do that, we just need to increase the voltage drop across our inductor. And there are two ways of doing this. If we increase the frequency of our signal generator, the reactance will increase and the voltage drop will increase. But increasing the frequency will also impact our measurements with our multimeter because the multimeter I have here isn't specced uh, above 7 kilohertz. So I'm using a 10 kilohertz signal here. It's good enough, but if I go into 20 kilohertz territory, I can see that the measurements aren't that accurate. And the other way of doing this is just to increase the current across our uh, circuit. So that way the voltage drop will be greater. And to increase the current, we can increase the voltage of our signal generator. I'm going to disconnect the inductor for a while so we can see the signal generated clearly. As you will remember from our previous video, we are using a sine wave from zero to one volts at 10 kilohertz. Now I'm just going to increase the voltage of the signal generator. You notice something happening here? Our voltage is being clamped. And that's because of the LEDs that we used for protection, because their forward voltage is around 1.6 volts. And actually, one of the LEDs turned on, that's some current is flowing across it. What I want to do is just to replace those LEDs with Zener diodes first. So they were here for protection. We still need something for protection in case our inductor induces a transient voltage. We don't want to destroy our signal generator. So here I have 3.3 volt Zener diodes. I'm just going to change the layout of our components in the breadboard as well. I'll just attempt to reduce the number of connections and reduce the stray capacitance a little bit. Again, we have our resistor. This is the 4.7 microhenries inductor we have. I'm just going to put across like this, leaving a bigger gap between its uh, leads. These metal contacts in these rows are more likely to act as a stray capacitance. So this way, we will hopefully reduce the stray capacitance a little bit. And now what I'm going to do with the Zener diodes is that I'm going to connect them back to back, just in parallel with our inductor. Okay, so now if our inductor has the chance to induce a transient voltage spike here, what's going to happen is that if the current is spiked this way, it will flow through this Zener diode first, no problems, it's forward biased. And then it was like, it will flow through this one if it's uh, more than 3.3 volts, this Zener diode will break and will start conducting and the voltage will be safely reduced. The other way, it's the same story. It will flow through this diode with no problems at all. And if it's larger than 3.3 volts, this then I will break down. And again, the current will flow freely, reducing the voltage. So it's just not going to go ahead and kill the next thing on this path. So now we are okay with the protection front. Let's remove our inductor for a while and check our signal again, just to make sure that it's not clamped. Okay, now no clamping whatsoever. Uh, let's increase the voltage a little bit more. Yeah, there's like 3.3 volts. You can see a little bit of clamping over here. Uh, which is fine. I think we can just go 3.2 volts and 3.3 volts is the maximum voltage level that my signal generator can go. We can use even higher with like higher values and our diodes. It's all fine. We don't use this total voltage of the signal generator in the calculations at all. So uh, you can go as high as your signal generator can go. And obviously the current will increase. So you have to make sure that the 
the current ratings of your inductors aren't surpassed. Yeah, that is the 4.7 micro Henry one. Back there again. I'm just gonna check my circuit. Yeah, it's all good. Okay, now let's do our measurements. Open our tool. The resistor value is the same. I'm just going to measure the voltage across our resistor first. Maybe change this one like this. So give me some space for measurement. And I can just remove our scope. Don't need this one. Okay, it's 257.23. Let me input that. 257.23. And now let's measure the voltage across our inductor, which was 0 0.15 millivolts before. You can just measure it from here. It should be fine. 0 0.51 millivolts. Okay, now it has changed. It has changed for the better. Okay, now what we are seeing here is 4.73. And that is pretty accurate. That's exactly where it should be. Now let's measure another inductor just to test that our method is working. This is a 10 micro Henry inductor. We are going to do the same measurements. Measure the voltage across the resistor first, 257.20. It's pretty close to the previous one. That's good. That's what we would expect. And now let's measure the voltage across our inductor. 1.08. Yeah, that's uh, pretty accurate. It's uh, and this is like a ten percent tolerance uh, component, but it's like exactly almost exactly ten micro Henrys. So um, now let's try to get something smaller. The smallest that I have is four point seven micro Henrys, but I have some medieval air core uh, wires here that I just uh, real low effort stuff, but uh, I just did to to measure these things and test these things. So um, this one should be somewhere around 1.2, 1 1.3 1 uh, micro Henry's. Let's pop it in there and see if we can measure it. So the voltage drop across it will be pretty small. Let's go in there and see what we have. Across the inductor, we have 0 0.13 millivolts. And now let's look at our resistor. What do we have across the resistor? 257.21. 22 yeah it's pretty close yeah that one is pretty close too like obviously it's quite hard to tell this is not a tidy one but um let's take another one to wind this one i just used a screwdriver which is five millimeters diameter and this is a 24 awg uh, solid core wire it's definitely not fit for that purpose i'm pretty sure you can do a much better job than me but now, uh, looking at the number of turns, and it has like uh, 13 windings on it. Um, and if you measure its length, let's have a look how long it is. So this thing is at 18.4 millimeters. Okay, now we can use another calculator off the web. Let's have a look. I'm just going to link this tool in the video description below as well. So our coil diameter was is uh, five millimeters, and our coil length was eighteen millimeters, and we had, I guess, thirteen turns on it, as far as I can count. Yeah, it has thirteen turns on it. Uh, now let's calculate it. Uh, the calculation is up. Okay, so this is supposed to be around two hundred nano Henrys. Um, so now let's pop it in there and see whether we can measure that 200 nano Henry's. Okay. Now let's measure the voltage drop across our inductor. If you can measure anything at all, because it's so small, you might not be able to measure anything after all. Uh, let me see 0 0.05 millivolts. That's good. We are able to measure something. And now let's measure the voltage across our resistor. 257.23 yeah so well we didn't land on 200 uh, nano henry's but we landed on 400 nano henry's and given this is like a real low effort hand wound uh inductor with a wire that's definitely not fit for the purpose uh it is close enough uh still if you want to do like a precision hand wound inductors for RF equipment or stuff like that you are probably better off with an LCR meter but um, 
it's pretty good enough. So, well, perhaps given this inductance is uh, super uh, small and our voltage drop across it is 0.05 millivolts again, which is very small given the uh, specs of my multimeter and uh, what is going on here. We are really exploring our boundaries at this point. Now that we have increased the voltage and able to read some voltage across it, now the next thing is we can try to increase the frequency. Let's try, uh, I don't know, maybe 15 kilohertz. See if it makes any difference. We are at 15 kilohertz now, well, 15.04. And let's see if there is any change in the voltage across our inductor. Well, it was 0.5 after all. What about this one? What about this one? What do we have here? 237.75. Okay, let's put these into our values in the tool. 237, 237.75 and 0 0.05 and our frequency is 15 kilohertz. Yeah. So yeah, we are getting closer to 200 on the handers. I think this is as good as and as low as we can go in terms of precision using this method. Uh, because at these frequencies, my multimeter isn't specced and I can uh, observe that it just can't measure anything above 15 kilohertz as we get closer to 20 kilohertz, the measurements are a little bit off, but perhaps the next steps could be building a PCB that's like get rid of all the stray capacitance, stray inductance, uh, perhaps use a better uh, low inductance resistor for this, and also perhaps uh, get a better multimeter or just build some sort of amplifier for the voltage across the inductor so we can still keep reading the voltages in the lower ranges. And that's a wrap. That's uh, pretty much it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or any ideas to improve this method further. I'm happy to answer any of your questions as usual. And uh, thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you have learned a few things from it. And uh, see you next time. Bye.